Turns out that not only is Pierre Polyev correct about the carbon tax, he's also correct about the wealth transfer from the have-nots to the haves, and how, as a result, the middle class is disappearing in Canada. Hello everybody, welcome to the channel. My name is Sterling. I'm your host. So I was looking over the economic report that was released today by Statistics Canada titled Distributions of Household Economic Accounts for Income Consumption, Saving, and Wealth of Canadian Household in the Second Quarter of 2024. And really what that means is how much are they spending and how much are they saving on the five quintiles, the, the wealthiest, all the way down to the poorest. And it is not a good outlook for those of us that are middle class and lower. We are losing money hand over fist. And just like Pierre Polyev keeps talking about it, it's getting economic wealth is being tr taken from the have nots and given to the have yachts. And the Liberal Party is doing nothing to stop it. Now, at the beginning of it here, they'll just give you a synopsis of what these what the report contains. Economically vulnerable households, those with lower incomes, those with less wealth, and those in younger age groups, continue to struggle to maintain their financial well-being relative to other households amid persistently high interest rates and housing cost pressures. Which is just a fancy way to say the most vulnerable in this country, the poorest among us, are getting poorer because of household and interest rates. Now, I'm just going to read, I'm not going to read the whole report to you, but I am going to read the pertinent parts, a couple of really important aspects of this report. Income gap widens as investment gains for highest income households outweighs, outweighs wage gain for the lowest. So, investment gain but he had some cash, he put it into one of these mutual funds or he bought a company, whatever it may be, and that income paid him out. And the other fella was trying to get a job that paid him well, but for some reason it didn't pay well enough. Income inequality increased in the second quarter of 2024 as the gap in the share of disposable income between the households in the top 40% and the bottom 40% of the income distribution reached 47 percentage points, the largest gap ever recorded in the history of the collection taking, which is 25 years because it was started in 1999. Now, the top 40% are going to be the upper middle class and the upper class and the lower middle class and the lower class are going to be the bottom. The middle class itself is going to be that 20% that they're missing. Persistently high interest rates over the course of 12 months ending in the second quarter of 2024 had varying impact on household finances depending on the level of income. While higher interest rates can lead to increased borrowing costs for households, they can also lead to higher yields on savings and investment accounts. Lower income households are more likely to have a limited capacity to take advantage of these higher returns, as on average they have fewer resources available for savings and investment. Now, some of the most important things said in this document are said here in the first paragraph, so I'm going to continue to, to read it to you so that you can understand the significance of what this report actually says. The lowest income household, the bottom 20% of the income distribution, have had average growth in disposable income in the second quarter of 2024 relative to their year earlier. Strong wage growth for the lowest income households, an average of an additional $417 a month or 14%, more than offset an increase in interest paid on mortgages and consumer debt, which is netted out over investment earnings as part of the disposable income wage gains for the lowest income households, or derived mainly from those working in sector service sector jobs as well as health and education, as well as professional and professional services. So those people that got out of school and went to work in the industries that the government has been promoting has gotten a lot of increase in their income and now that has outstripped the amount of money that they've had, the interest that they're paying on their loans. But that stands to reason because when you are at the poorest, you don't have any outstanding debt. You don't have anything. And on the good side, you don't have any debt. 
And then you start to get a job and you start to have income come in and then you buy a car, but you buy that car on a lease and, you know, things like that. So your debt starts to increase. Bank says, here's a credit card. And you start to say, well, I'll just buy, you know, this thing from Amazon while I wait for my income tax return. And I mean, I'm sure most of you listening to me can understand exactly that that's the type of lifestyle that most of the people in the world live. While the lowest income households increased their share of income in the second quarter of 2024, the lowest, right? The poorest people got more money. That stands to reason. Those within this, the middle 60s, so the lower middle, the middle and the upper middle of income distribution decreased their share by 1% from the year earlier. Middle income household investment gains did not keep pace with the growth in interest paid on mortgages and consumer debts. I'll say that one again. Middle income household investment gains did not keep pace with growth in interest paid on mortgages and consumer debt. What they said there is those people living in the middle class didn't start to have enough money to pay the increase in their lifestyle. So because gas costs more, they didn't get more money on their in, not like on their income because their mortgage rates went up through the roof. They didn't get more money on their income. So now they are starting to lose a lot of money and there's a chart. But you can see here in the next, uh, oh, sorry, I'll finish the paragraph, right? In the second quarter of the highest income households, the top 20% of the income distribution saw their largest increase in the share of disposable income compared to the other income groups at 0.8%. Average disposable income for the highest income households increased at a faster than average pace with the second quarter of 2024 relative to the year before being 7.6% in growth in investment income. That's far greater than the increase in interest paid. So whatever money they happen to have borrowed or any money that they have debts on, they gained 7.6%, which can be an enormous amount of money when you consider that they're not talking about a hundred bucks here, right? So if Buddy got 10 grand in, he made, if you got a million in, he made, or they made, she made, whatever it may be. So what that article just said is the very, the people at the very bottom, they had the, there was jobs they could go to get to. And because they didn't have any money, they increased their yearly salary by 14%. The lower middle class is not doing well. The middle class is, is not getting paid enough to keep up with the mounting debt. And remember, middle class people are the ones that live with the most of it. And the top, the upper class, not the upper middles, but the upper class are the ones that are really making a lot of money, which is exactly what Pierre Polyev and the conservatives are saying. There's a wealth transfer leaving the middle class is shrinking because it's running out of money because it can't afford to buy a house because it can't afford to buy a car. And if it can't afford to buy a car, who can afford the insurance rates from all the car theft and who can afford the gas? So now you're talking about a real struggle, right? So you no longer feel like you're in the middle class because you're struggling and the money that you have coming in is not keeping up with the debts that you have to um, put out to maintain such lifestyle as what we call middle, right? Now, I, don't, I got two things I want to show you, but you can understand just looking at this, right? Wealth gap widens as financial assets gain benefit the wealthiest, so I don't really, shouldn't really need to read that chapter to you or par paragraph to you. you. That title says it all, right? The wealthiest among us are getting wealthier and the poorest among us are get, getting poorer. The least wealthy reduced net worth as mortgage debt increase outweighs real estate gain. So that means the people that got mortgages that were just barely on the cusp has the debt has increased and the house is not worth that anymore. The report goes on to say that young people are also having a hard time. If they're getting help from their parents to pay off their house, they're doing okay. Unfortunately, the debt, the income that they're making and the debt interest payments that they're going out are very are coming very offset. So they have what coming in is going out as twice as much. I just want to leave you with this one part that that is more significant, right? Because we have a political situation in this country where one side is saying, oh, no, we're helping the middle class and those struggling to join it. And then we have the other side saying, hey, wait a minute, you're destroying the middle class. So let's just understand what's happening here. And that's what this video is about, right? It's about the, about the destruction of the middle class, which apparently is true. 
So here we can see average household net savings by income quintile, which for those of you that might not be aware, the quintiles, are there's five of them, obviously, with the word quint. And they go lower class, lower middle class, middle class, upper middle class, and then upper class. And that is just how much money you make. That's based only on, on your economic uh, situation. However, we can see there that it's a graph, and, and that's great, but the, the graph is broken down down here but if i show you quickly if i just show you quickly on the graph zero is where you're breaking even everything on the left side of this graph is how much money you're losing and everything on the right side of this graph is how much money's being made and you can see that from the third in quintile down everybody's losing money now i'm going to click this over to image it now here this graph is broken down right here and we can see that the highest from 2020 they were doing okay and now in 2024 they're almost back to to par the fourth right the second highest in 2020 we're doing okay and then we come across in the second quarter of 2024 yeah it's it's less than half of what they were making but they're still in the black right the third they were doing good for 2020 they were barely scraping by by 2021 oh covid 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 that's what the, the liberals will tell you and then all of a sudden we hit the 2022 and they're losing two thousand dollars 2023 they're losing two thousand dollars 2024 they're losing two thousand dollars so now the second one and the lowest one have always been down right i mean these are the poor but the middle class is supposed to be the people that are in the middle they're supposed to be the ones that without it without the middle class your economy is disasters because you have the rich, 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 and the poor, 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 and I can point, you can throw a dart in this earth and find 75 countries that will make you understand what that's like when you have the rich, 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 and the poor, poor, poor. But in North America, where we have freedom of speech, in the West, where we have the, it's the only culture on earth that has a middle class, that's how you get prosperity, the middle class, the people that spend it, the people that make it, the people that are just trying to, you know, have their life, get their kids off, things like that, are losing money three years in a row. The economy has shrunk, and this chart, as you can see, goes second quarter to second quarter, so that's year over year. So year over year, from 2020 to 2024, there has been a swing of five grand. And that's just the average. What that indicates is that there's less money coming in and there's more money going out. So when Pierre Polyev and the Conservatives stand up there and they say that there's a wealth transfer, and when they stand up there on whatever podium and they say that the middle class is being hurt, hit the hardest, and the Liberals try to call them some kind of a name, try to paint them as being a conspiracy, try to paint them as being whatever it is, whatever happens to be their word of the day, we can see here, you and I, that the, the truth is in Statistics Canada's mathematics, right? The numbers are not going to lie to us. They're right here in this chart. So the the report breaks down, and I'll, I'll link the report down in the uh, in the comments or the description. But the the report breaks down that the wealthiest among us are gaining 47% of the income, and the poorest among us are barely getting by, and the middle class is shrinking, 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 shrinking. All right, I'm going to wrap here. I want to thank you all for listening. I'll talk to you next time.